It's me, Robin, with Simple Food, Simple Life. Today, I'm going to show you how I make a really delicious, creamy coleslaw with a twist. I think you're really going to like it. It's very, very good and very, very easy. So, stick with me and I will show you how to make creamy coleslaw with a twist. Okie doke, we're in the kitchen. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me. Now, I'm going to show you the ingredients that you need to make this creamy slaw with a twist. You're going to need some cabbage, of course. Got to have that. You have to have um, some onion. You're going to need a carrot and a stalk of celery and an apple. Now, the apple is the twist and I'm telling you this will change your coleslaw game. <laughs> uh, we're coming up on summer, we're coming up on picnics and barbecues and if you uh, make this everybody will like it. It's really delicious. Okay, and you're going to need a box grater. If you don't have a box grater, don't worry about it, or if you don't have a grater, don't worry about that. You can just chop it smaller and it'll work out just fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I like to uh, use a knife on my cabbage. I don't like to grate my cabbage when I make slaw. I know, it sounds weird, but I just don't. So. I'm going to grate this cabbage and let me lay the other ingredients aside right now. And I'm going to um, not grate it, excuse me, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to show you. Now, this is actually with the core removed, it's about half of a head of cabbage. Okay? So, all I do is I just take my knife and I just cut down the side of the cabbage. That's all I do. And I get these little I don't know, what would you call them? Ribbons? I guess you could call them ribbons. I don't know. <laughs> and so I'm just going to cut this up. And then once I get this done, I'm going to cut through it again. Just to make it smaller. You can make this as thin as you want. If you want to grate it, go ahead. But honestly, I like the texture of the slaw when it's like this. That's my personal preference, and I think it looks nice. It looks really uh, pretty. So let's, then I'm just going to cut through it like this. And I just like it. So it's kind of more, you know, in bite sized pieces. But you do whatever you think is best because it's your slaw, not mine. <laughs> well, this is mine. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to get yourself a big bowl. When in doubt, go big. Gives you more room to stir. You can always transfer it in something else. And I'm going to continue chopping this. I have this piece left. And we're going to do the same thing with this a quarter. And then I'll show you what to do from there. Alright, there's what I have. Actually, that half a head of cabbage made quite a bit. Now we're going to put in our celery. And all I have here, I just got one stalk of celery. And I'm just going to chop that up. I'm going to make it fairly small. Because um, I want everything to kind of blend in. So I'm going to just make that fairly small and get that chopped up, put it in there. And then we're going to put in the onion. Now remember, we're going to grate in the carrot and the apple. So put that in. The celery, sometimes you don't find that a lot in slaw, but it gives it a really nice, um, I don't know, crunchiness. That's why I like for the cabbage to be cut a little bigger because it gives it a nice crunchiness and it doesn't um, seem to fade away 
after you put your dressing on it. Putting my celery in there. I think I'll cut this one in half again. Now, I was curious about the origination uh, where coleslaw come from, C-O-L-E-S-L-A-W, which is one word. <clears throat> Some people say coleslaw, but it's not. It's coleslaw. So I looked it up, and there's this uh, neat little website. It's called uh, culinarylore.com, and let me show you this, what that looks like. It's all green. <laughs> And um, it says on that, on culinary lore, L-O-R-E, L -O -R -E, it says that coleslaw is Dutch. It's a Dutch term that was originally coleslaw. Coleslaw, which means cabbage salad. So, you see how I'm cutting the onion here? And cabbage salad... Um, you know, New York was originally called New Amsterdam because it was settled by the Dutch. And so they brought their own cuisine, of course. And um, it was, and coleslaw was one of them, cabbage salad. And then it eventually, the word cool, K-O-O-L, became coal because it kind of got anglinized, as they say. And that's how we got coleslaw. And it was, it, aren't you glad? <clears throat> aren't you glad we got it? <laughs> all right. You can see I didn't use all that onion. That was just part of a piece of onion. You know, that's your choice. If you, you put in as much as you like. I like that flavor, but I don't want it, I don't want my slaw overpowered by the onions. So just a tad in there is really good. It's a nice surprise. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now then, oh, and I'll put a link to that website if you're interested in it. There's some interesting things there. Now, got my, my uh, grater here, so I'm just going to, I'm going to grate this carrot and I'll just grate the carrot until I actually think that it looks right and I have as much as I want. So, I have a pretty good sized carrot here. Carrot adds a little sweetness to your slaw and it also adds flavor. Now, when you do this, be careful. Don't, don't cut your fingers because, you know, that don't taste good in your coleslaw. <laughs> just be careful. Let's see what we got here. I think that's plenty. That's plenty of carrot. So, put that in my slaw. Doesn't that look good? Now listen, I know what some of you may be thinking. You may be thinking that if you put that apple in there, the apple is going to turn brown, but uh, it doesn't. It does not turn brown. I'm going to I'm going to use the whole apple, including the peel. So let's do it. But I'm going to grate it on the same side of the grater that I did the carrots. Okay? And this wouldn't take you as long if you're not blabbing or showing somebody how to do it. It won't take you that long. <clears throat> and the ingredients are pretty doggone simple. Don't you think? Now, all I did, I just grated it down to the core. I'm going to do the same thing with the other half. So, honestly, it's not too much work here, you think? <laughs> but I'm going to use the whole apple. Now, what's, what's good about this, you don't actually taste apple. You don't say, oh, that's apple. There's something about it, it just blends right in. It's delicious. It adds a tartness as well as a sweetness. Use whatever apples you have. The, this one happens to be a Fuji. That was what was on sale. So that's what I happened to. That's what I decided to put in there. I didn't need anything special. 
Now, let's get our apple in there. That's pretty good. All right, now, take my spatula here and I'm gonna, I'm going to stir this up, just toss it around a little bit. <clears throat> now, you can uh, season this with salt and pepper as much as you like. Just season it to taste. That's really all you have to do. And I'll show you what I'm going to put on there. You're going to love this. And I've used this dressing in a couple of other videos as well. So, it's very simple. Very, very easy. All this dressing is, is one half cup of mayonnaise. It is... Uh, two tablespoons of white vinegar and two tablespoons of sugar. Now you can make this as tart or sweet as you like. I like mine a little on the sweet side with a tart background. So that's what I'm doing. Now this, you, you may not think so, but this is actually going to be plenty of dressing for this amount of vegetables. Plenty of dressing. Because as, the, as it sits in the refrigerator, the vegetables are going to break down and they will add their own water or liquid to the mix. It's pretty efficient of them, isn't it? <laughs> so, it may not look like the right amount, but it will be absolutely fine. If you find that it's not enough for however many um, vegetables you have, then just make another small amount and add it to it. Half a cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of vinegar, two tablespoons of sugar. Now, if you only, if you if you have Miracle Whip, say for example, and you don't have mayonnaise, or you'd rather use Miracle Whip, that's fine. You can just adjust the sugar and the vinegar because Miracle Whip is kind of a, it's a little bit on the sweet side and the tart side. It doesn't have that, um, it's not mayonnaise, it doesn't taste like mayonnaise, so you want to adjust to that. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of salt, not much, just a little bit, and then later on I'll add some pepper to it. Um, you don't have to add pepper if you don't want to. It's perfectly fine the way it is. And I'm going to give this a taste. Now, remember, you want to put this in the refrigerator for, oh, a while before you serve it. At least an hour or so. That way it gives it a chance to really uh, break down a little bit and get really tasty. See that apple there? Can you see? There's a piece of apple there. And that apple... The peel just adds a little more color to your coleslaw. I'm going to take a taste. <laughs> it's so good. The combination of the apple, the onion, the cabbage, it's pretty doggone awesome. So, just transfer it into another bowl with the lid. Put it in your refrigerator for at least an hour before it's served. And you will be happy. Your guests will be happy. Your family will be happy. Now listen, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay? And as always, you just remember that little is much when God is in it. Okay? All right. Hey, I love you. And I will see you next time. Take care. Love you. Bye.